Welcome back to Let's Play Thousand Arms. After the end of the last recording, I came back to the inn here because I realized I needed to stay here. You know, mice had like one EP left. Yeah, because when you come back, the guy says, Welcome. It's still a mess, but you may rest here. Now let's see what happens if we talk to him. We can't give in to the Dark Acolytes. We must rebuild this town. Now, aside from the guy I, I did talk to on camera last video and going to the inn there, there's not too much else. Most of the areas are blocked off and or, you know, a lot of the buildings are destroyed to the point where you can't enter them anymore. We do have one more building we can go into, though, which is this shop here that I never really showed off. QQ Hands. So I figure I should show it off right now, and it might be a good idea to purchase some items anyway. Welcome. Our merchandise was spared. That's fortunate. So there's we've got potions, though there's... I've got plenty of those. Then there's elixirs and high antidotes, which I don't think I really have much or any of these. The elixirs are like, you know... Uh, ethers or something, they restore an EP, and the high antidotes will uh, let you recover from poison or paralysis, so I'm probably going to want to pick up some of each of these. I'll pick up two elixirs and see how many high antidotes I can get four. Yeah, I think that's good. That's a good, that's a good way to split that up. Alright. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Hang in there, man. The only other NPC around in town is this guy up here, who, unfortunately, I already talked to before I actually saved my progress, and that made one of his dialogue bits disappear. So I loaded my save from right before the previous dungeon and got back up to here so I could talk to him, so let me insert that bit of video now. I was helpless. People were being attacked right in front of my eyes. The only thing I could do was escape. But at least I was able to help others escape as well. So, a lot of the people obviously did get out, so that's good. They're safe and everything, they'll be able to rebuild the town, and after, after that initial time you talk to him, he just says, I should be happy since we were able to evacuate the citizens. So, with all that being said, there's nothing else to see here. It's time to just head to the Lucent Cave like Jabba wanted. You can see even the uh, dating statue here is really burned up, and if you even try to use it, which is really goofy at this point in time, so Dina actually calls you out on it and says, there isn't time for this. So yeah, you really have no choice right now, but to go to the Lucent Cave. So that's where we'll, we will be going. Just open up my map here. So Dina said it was to the south, which is actually this way. Is it around this? Wait, no, what am I saying? That's not south. Oh my god, I don't know what is wrong with my brain right now. It's this way. Man, I wonder if I should honestly be recording right now if I'm getting friggin' cardinal directions mixed up. Oh well. I'll do what I can here. You guys need to get out of my way. I don't have time for your crap. Out of my face. Gotta get to the Lucent Cave. Wait a minute. That knife guy before had, uh, his action, dang it, his action was going to be question mark, a bunch of question marks. I didn't know these guys had any action other than attacking him. Kind of curious what that is now. All right, here we go. Took a little bit, which is why I did a fade there. And let's see what this other attack of it, oh wow, he like, goes all insane and licks his knives and then gets, I'm guessing, an attack boost? Yeah, he gets an attack boost. So I'll block that attack of his. Of course, Odina's taunt lowers his attack power, and I guarded. And now, I'm gonna kill him. With a critical hit, nice. 
Yeah, that multi-hit I got in the last video did 66 damage to an enemy that probably had a little more defense than that knife guy there had. Pretty awesome. Alright, now with that guy out of our way, let's keep traveling around to the Lucent Cave. As we get closer, we're probably going to start running into some different enemies. If we encounter any regular encounters we've already seen, though, I will go ahead and cut them. I think it's around... yeah, it's up there. Past the arch and around and up on this little plateau is the cave entrance. And we've got Knife Masters now! It's a pallet swap! And these guys do 8 damage with their little knife throw. And they take more than one hit. Oh boy. It seemed like I was slower than him, so... I might have to just take the hits. Oh, really? You jerk. He stunned me and got the Damashi icon! Yeah, I, I don't know if... Maybe I'm not timing it good enough, but I'm not getting my attacks off. I'm gonna keep trying. Ah. I feel like I should be able to make that. I feel like I should be able to hit him before he gets me. But it's not happening for me. I wonder if I'm too low-leveled and my speed stat isn't high enough. Hey, I got my attack off, all right. Now let's defend. Mash the cancel button and see if I can get another attack off. Ah. Takes a certain finesse with the timing of the X button, I guess. If I had a higher speed stat, that would be a little easier, but as it is, bit of a tough enemy. Not really that bad, though. I've got a lot of potions and heals, so... We will make do. I know there's other enemies around here too, but... Since we've made it to the cave, let's just go ahead and go inside. Actually, let's not. For one reason... Oh, wait, no, never mind. I am so indecisive! Go back in. Ah, go back in. Go back in. Basically, I was gonna come out just to save real quick. But the thing is, I don't really need to. The only reason I was going to save was to show you guys the current chapter title we're on. But you'll see that you'll see that next time I try to save anyway, when I have to overwrite the old data. So the Lucent Cave here is pretty freaking... Well, pretty. It's gorgeous. It's just... It's a crystal cavern. Those are always nice to look at. We actually got an elixir out of that chest, so there might be some nicer items around here, too. Dude, a sword crab! It's a freaking pallet swap of the first boss-like enemy we encountered. Let's see if I can hit him. Before he hits me, I can! Awesome! That's good, because I probably want to be guarding when he hits me. He has a special, I think I know what that is. Oh, right, it's Bubble Beam. For some reason I was thinking, holy crap! For some reason I was thinking that would be something else. I'm gonna defend... I'm gonna guard this next one. Man, like, 24 damage. Wow, that's bad. So, Dina, you wanna heal me? Let's see how much damage it does when I guard it. 10. Yeah, that's a significant reduction. Oh, that killed him. Alright. Well, Mice can heal himself then. I'll just swap out his swords and heal out of battle. That works too. Then I can conserve Sodina's MP. Or EP, sorry. The uh yeah, the EP of the back front the back row character is kinda more precious than the EP of the front row character in a way, I would say. Particularly at this point. Because, you know. Well, especially because as mice, mice is I'm ha having mice use the dark sword, the dark sword right now, so he doesn't even have access to his spells in battle anyway. Whereas 
conserving Sodina's EP is kind of nice because that way she has more of it to spend in battle for like heals and barriers and stuff. I just gotta re-equip the Dark Sword and we'll be good to go. At this point, uh, you know, I've played this game and beaten it a couple times, but... Um, you know, in the previous videos, I've been going over stuff that I just recently went over in the failed recording session. From here on, though, I'm going purely from just kind of, kind of reaction and whatever memory I happen to have of playing this game. Mace Gear Man? Dude, that's like the enemy we fought at the end of the last dungeon, and he's just a normal enemy here. Does that mean the Dark Acolytes are here, though? I, like, genuinely don't remember, actually. I, like, I don't recall... I don't recall any significant forces being here at this part of the game. Like, of course they've got their robots going around trying to do stuff, but I don't recall any of the major players being here at all. It is a little early in the game for that, anyway. Oh, now I know why that guy took, uh... I was, like, kind of sitting here going, like, man, this guy's taking more hits than the last one did, as far as I remember, in, the like, the, just the last video I, I did. That's because last time I fought one of those, I used a wind bottle on it, so I did some extra damage that way with Sodina. That's why it took more hits from Mice this time, because I wasn't also attacking it with Sodina. And look at, look at this area, like... I know it's not like super, I know it's not like, you know, modern high definition graphics or anything, but still, nice design. Oh hey, more new enemies. Freelance Ninja and I didn't see what that word was, ghost. I remember distinctly that it's like some Japanese word, so it would be hard for me to just get it fully on at a glance. And the enemies in this cave are a little tougher. I'm gonna see about guarding that next attack. I don't know how much good it'll do me. Because I don't think I was fast enough to get a hit off on him, but... I'm gonna have Sodina stand by with a heal spell. Seems like a good idea right now. Yeah, I know. A little slow. Oh, I missed him. I guess it makes sense that ninjas would have high evasion. Oh, not the Damashi icon! Wow, really? Okay, heal, please. Heal. Mice is about to die. And now he's not. I'll ever stand by with another one, I guess. Out of my friggin' way! Yeah, you take that critical hit. You die. Now this guy's got friggin' four katanas. But, he's not quite as fast as the Freelance Ninja, it seems, so I can probably guard his attacks. Good thing, from the looks of it. He only did three damage, but I don't know what that would have done if I had not blocked it. He only takes two hits, though, so he's not too bad. And so Dina gets a level up. Nice. Yeah, I really like this area. The music's kind of pretty... Like, all of the pathways are just made out of crystal, pretty much. It does make it a little hard, little hard to see where you're going, though. And there's some nice water flowing in the area. Pretty great stuff. I don't know if I'm missing any alternate paths or anything. It's kind of hard to see where I was going in that area back there. Everything's all transparent. I think that said Hardy Kitty. Hardy Kitty ghosts or something. Not really sure what that means, though. Uh, yeah, right. Changing weapons. That's what I want to do. So that I can have my seal himself. Because he's only at 43 HP. And then put the Dark Sword back on him. I know it's kind of tedious having to do this. I don't think I usually did this in other playthroughs, but... I got the Stronger Sword, so I want to use it. But I also want to, you know, conserve Sodina's MP. I couldn't go through there anyway, could I? No, I have to go around somehow. 
this treasure chest right here I can get, though, and it's got the Book of Delay, which is an item that I'm guessing kind of slows down someone's turn gauge, or resets their turn gauge, or something, I don't know. That battle just had a single freelance ninja. Next battle that has a Harikiri, Harikiri Ghost, though, I might want to leave in, because they have a special attack that I didn't get to show off before, so... I didn't get to get around to that other chest, though. I wonder if I can do that from somewhere else. Oh man, this area... Everything is so bright, especially on my monitor. Wait, is there, like, no path? Oh, I can go this way. Okay. I might have my, t my TV settings too bright. Oh hey, it's an har Hara... Oh, it's a Harakiri ghost, I think it said. Goes by- the name goes by so quickly. Now I shall defend. Ha! <laughs> missed. I'm gonna stand by for a bit and see if I can get him to do his special. Yeah, he's gonna do it right now. After Sodina cheers for me. Just kind of an alternate sword strike that does a little more damage, but not too much more than his regular attack. Like, at all. I believe in the last battle he hit me with it a couple times while I was not guarding, and it only did, like, 7 damage. Necronmacon? Dude. I have to see what that does. It is a battle- it scares away the enemies, that's awesome. Book of Delay, yeah, okay. The Book of Delay s slows down the enemies, and the Necronmacon scares them away. Honestly, I would expect the Necronmacon to do something worse than that, but that works. Oh man, is this the correct path? I wanted to go the optional route. Hey, I got an Antidote EX from that last fight. I actually don't remember what that cures. Next time I get into a battle with one of those enemies, I might have to leave it in, so I could try and show off their specials as well. Heal up here. I'll go ahead and do it twice. And status, equip the Dark Sword. Out of curiosity, for curiosity's sake, let's see got the antidote, which restores poison and sleep, or recovers poison and heals poison and sleep, the high antidote, which heals poison and paralysis, and the antidote EX, which heals silence and confusion. Okay. Those are good things to be able to heal. Now let's see, what's this way? Hmm. Battles are this way, for one thing. I'm guessing this is the right way to go. Ah, uh, I'll just go ahead and go this way. Oh wow, there's like... a bunch of different paths. Man! Alright, that's a dead end. I kinda hate dungeons that do that, like, well... I mean... Not really, like... It's good when a dungeon does give you more ways to... more than one way to go, it isn't just completely linear. Oh, I should probably leave these battle in just in case. But at the same time, like, uh, I, I, I always want to explore places fully, and I wish that I, I wish that I could know which ways I don't need to go, because the ways that I don't need to go are actually the ways I want to go first. A lot of times, I'll end up finding my way to like the exit or main part, or like the exit or, like, a lot of times I'll end up finding my way to the exit or the boss or something pretty quick, and not finding all the extra treasures and any other things that I would like to have found. Oh wait, I was gonna... Yeah, let me keep this battle going a bit, because I wanted to have this guy do his specials. Yeah, here we go. I guess that's just kind of the way it is, though, like... Yeah, he does that, and he actually hits both rows. That's right, there are attacks that can hit both rows. 
Oh man, he's doing a special again. I guess I'll keep guarding. That probably doesn't really surprise you, because you saw Sodina do that to the enemies. But yeah, enemies can do it too. You haven't seen it yet, but enemies can get critical hits and multi-hits too, so you really gotta watch it. I don't know if all enemies can get critical and multi-hits, but a lot of them can. Wait, really? The Freelance Ninja's just gonna run away? I'll take that, but, like, really? <laughs> oh man, wow, they really do play by the exact same rules. He tried to run away. And it didn't work. That's that's amazing. I'm used to games always taking kind of the cheap route with, you know, enemies you fight, where they don't quite play by the same rules. Like, if they try to get away, they're gonna get away with a 100% success rate. But no, not in this game. That's awesome. Now, what's in this chest? I acquired a potion. Yeah, I guess that's kind of the way it is with dungeons. Like... I kind of... it's just that kind of trade-off, like, I, I always wish I could know which way I should be going to get all the treasures and everything, but at the same time... If dungeons just are, like, completely straightforward and only have one path, or, or otherwise just, like, tell you where to go, that gets boring, so, you know... Eh, just gotta have that trade-off there, I guess. I don't actually mind completely linear things really, like a lot of people seem to. But I would get tired of it if just like all games did that. The key thing is basically all as like always variety, you know. Playing the exact same kind of stuff is always gonna get old. I don't want really intricate mazes all the time, but I do want them sometimes. I also kind of want straightforward linear dungeons sometimes, but definitely not all the time. So, you know. Is this the final area? Nope. Lots of sword crabs around. Oh hey, this is just a treasure chest. There must be another path I missed. Jeez, really? Another battle already? This encounter rate. Again, I must say, like, I do not have my TV configured ideally for this place. It's like all the really, really bright colors and transparency is making it hard for me to see where I'm supposed to be going. Wait, did I take this path? I did not take this path all the way, did I? Let's see what's up at the end of it. Finally got to see that one enemy again, and it is indeed a Harakiri ghost. H-A-R-A-K-I-R-I. -I. And I'm already in another battle, wow. Before I got interrupted, I was gonna say that I think the deal with the... Oh man, really? Like, just a dead end then? Man, I was gonna say, I think the deal with the Harakiri's... Uh, Harakiri Ghost special is not really so much that it's any stronger than its regular attack, but just that it is actually executed a lot faster, so. Also, I kind of thought that the Mace Gear Man, for some reason I kind of thought, didn't I go this way? Like, did I not? Oh, wait. Um, I went this way before, right? I'm losing track. Unfortunately, this is kind of, kind of another day where I'm recording this when, like, I have just woken up and I'm somehow not really functioning at full mental capacity, I think. But, uh, yeah, anyway, as I was saying, for some reason I kind of thought that the uh, Mace Gear men had another special, and I think I just, like, figured out why I was thinking that. I was mixing them up with the Hammer Gear men, who have a special attack that I believe I only saw off-camera when I was playing on, playing on the PS1 here to catch up to where I was. Speaking of that... Oh hey, the Damashi. Man! Oh man, that fight was terrible! The Mace Gear man I was fighting... wait... 
save Damashi over there, is this not the path I have to go to? No, it's not, is it? What? Where does this go? Is there treasure up here? I just ran away from that fight. I did not want to deal with another friggin' Mace Gear Man right now. As I was saying, the last one I thought, oh, that's how you get over here. Alright. Got a comic book. Interesting. The last Mace Gear Man I fought, like, every turn it got, it's the entire fight, except for the very last turn, it was spamming its special attack. It was spamming its special attack that hits both Sodina and Mice, and that attack actually executes quicker than its normal attack, so it got more hits off than it normally would have, on top of the fact that it was hitting both party characters, and that was just... Ugh. It was terrible. But we've got this save Damashi here, so I'm gonna go ahead and save before we move on to the last area. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to mention, too. I was talking about the Hammer Gear Men, how I encountered a special attack you guys didn't get to see when I was, you know, off camera going through the PS, uh, going through this on the PS1 to catch up to where I was. Another thing I saw off camera during that little segment was the fact that apparently, you remember outside of Fort Teve after Musa clears away all the robots, if you wait too long, more, if you wait too long before you run into Fort Teve, three more will actually drop down and you'll have to fight them in a battle. But we have made it to this forge here with a very pretty music. There's a reason for the pretty music. We've got a nice forge here where we can forge our weapons, which I'm gonna do. But we have also reached the sacred altar. Before we move on, I would like to power up our weapons because it's probably a good idea. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Okay, what? What? level is Mice's Charisma? Is Charisma's level 3? Um... How am I learning a spell right now? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm actually not sure how this works. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I actually don't know exactly what's going on right now. The mechanics, as I explained them before, I'm pretty sure were accurate, both from what I was reading and from past experience. I wonder if you learn spells at these places. Like, these special forges teach you spells or something, I don't know. I'm not positive. I might have to check into this later so I can verify it in a future video. And for now, though, we've got stronger weapons, and we've got the Geo spell, so that's cool. But now let's get to what we really came here for. I came here when I was little. I could have sworn there was a flame. Yes, that hammer! Jabba was doing something with it. Alright. Let's just try... Holding it up! I can... I can hear... the sound of someone forging a sword. Elemental spirits are curious about what kinds of swords I forge. Sodina, come with me. Well, that was pretty awesome. That's right, the place we just were was not the actual sacred altar. Actually, getting to the sacred altars isn't that simple. This is the Sacred Altar. That other place was more like... an entryway. And 
that is the Holy Flame. The Holy Flame of the Sacred Torch is the power of light, the only power that can battle the darkness. The Holy Flame draws power from the mind. The darkness draws from hatred. The light draws from higher love. The flame instills power to the swords. The one who obtains the power of the holy flame can use the elemental beasts. Sacred altars lie in various places. Use the holy flame to forge swords. Alight your hammer with the holy flame. Use the sword forged with the power of spirit to protect the holy flame from the evil. upon you. I am Akun, the elemental beast of the water. So, we saw five of those, you know, ancient master guys, the like, kind of spirit looking guys. One of them is stuck behind like stayed behind and turned into an elemental beast to, to join our side. Seems like that would imply that the other four then would pr probably also be able to do that. They just have not they just have not right now. Wow, I can feel the power. And the holy flame has been instilled into the hammer. What does it feel like, mice? This is great! The power flows from the hammer! Jabal told me to impart the power of the elemental spirits, you need the love of a girl who is of pure heart and soul. Mice, let's forge the sword together. I know it sounds embarrassing, but I'd like to be of help to you. Alright. Well... That's obviously what Jabba wanted us to see, so let's return to the Sacred Smithy. There's not really anything more to do at the Sacred Altar. Target acquired. Sending Sacred Altar information. Damn, we were being followed! Information on the Sacred Altar is being sent? Well, great. The Empire might now be able to have... They might be able to figure out that... They can't just, you know, find the sacred altars. They have to be able to get into them and through some manner like that. Anyway, we've got a dark gear man here. As you'd expect, he's gonna be a lot tougher than the regular ones, but... That's not gonna be too much of a problem. Especially if I get critical hits like that. He actually did 7 damage while I was guarding, which is not too shabby, but not too bad either. Kinda hoping he'll do something other than attack. I'd like him to show off that special that we missed from the other Gear Man variant. I'm pretty sure he should have the same special. I'm not sure how much HP this guy has. Ah, you missed. I think I'm gonna hold off on attacking for the moment. And his offensive power probably just got lowered by Sadina's taunt anyway, although I didn't actually see because I skipped past the text box. I am impatient. Oh wow. There you go, you just saw it for yourself. Enemies can get critical hits. Thankfully I was guarding. And now he is doing his special. That's good, I was just about to give up on waiting. Yep. The robots can use a lightning blast. 
Well, I've got a special trick of my own now. Our first summon for this game. Is a big old water dragon. I'd say that was a nice way to finish that enemy off. That's that's awesome. I hit him like just the right number of times beforehand. I, I did not plan that, I swear. I didn't know how much HP it had. Yeah, mice! The ancient masters said there are sacred altars all over the world. Let's go through Fort Teve and go to Hatoba in Sea Rock. That should lead us to the next sacred altar. Alright. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, game, for, you know, spitting me out outside of the cave. I did really not want to have to backtrack through that area, because that place was really throwing me off with all the bright color, like how super bright everything was, and the transparency of a lot of everything. I just, I couldn't see what I was, I couldn't see what I was doing. Maybe my TV settings are not good, but I don't know. I cut out a lot of battles this video, so let's leave this one in, even if it is something we've seen before. Eh, it's just a knife master. Oh well. At least it's only one of them, and not three of them. I kinda... I kinda wanna wander around a little, just a little bit, right in this area, and see if I can get at least one of the other enemies around here. Because there's at least one I'm sure I've seen in this area. Or, you know, that I remember from being in this area. Oh, hey, so Dina has full EP. Oh, were we healed, like, right before that Gear Man fight? I guess that makes sense. Let's see. Yeah, my, my it, what, we weren't healed after the fight, we were healed right before it. Man, that was really nice of the game. Oh, hey, I... Just realized I totally need to double check the uh, power of Mice's sword versus this one right now. Oh, look at that! My sword's got a nice red glow to it, and now it is actually a lot better than the Dark Sword. Like, a lot better. Wow. Mice, go ahead and use your sword now, man. That's, that's gonna do you a lot of good. Alright. So with that equipped, I totally forgot I had just, like, forged it. I should have equipped that before the fight, but then again, if I had, maybe I would have killed the boss with, well, the sword... More of a mini-boss. But if I had equipped the better sword, I might have killed it before it got to show off its special, so... Really, that wouldn't have been so good. Man, really? Just a Damashi? Come on, show me one of those enemies. I might just have to move on. 38 damage. No crits or multi-hits or anything. Oh, dude, this Damashi actually has more HP in this area. So it's like, even though it's... It looks the same in everything, I think. But it's not quite the same enemy. That's interesting. He's definitely doing a lot more damage, too. It's not a lot of damage at this point, but it would have been probably pretty bad if that had been hitting me at the start of the game, because it didn't have as much HP, and it probably would have been doing more damage because my defense was lower. I'm going to try for one more battle in this area, and if we don't get what I'm trying to get, I'll just move on to Fort Teve and uh, end the video. It's a sad thing that we lost Jobble, but... I guess his legacy will continue through mice. We'll have to make him proud. If we can collect more of the Holy Flames, we can probably actually get powerful enough to stop the evil empire. And yeah, just another Knife Master. Oh well, I guess I'm moving on then. Let's see how much damage I can do to this guy now. 30 damage. I'm still not one-shotting him quite yet, but... 
still doing a lot better for myself. Hey, he just used a multi-hit attack. That of all... That guy of all enemies is one that I thought might not be able to do that, because... I mean, his attack is throwing knives at you. I didn't really... It's kind of... Hard to think of that getting a multi-hit, but no, he can get a multi-hit. I think that pretty much confirms it, then. All enemies have a chance of being able to, like, crit or multi-hit you. All types of enemies. You don't see it much in the, like, really early game, obviously. Because they don't want you to die horribly. But it's a possibility. Man, those Koro Spears just got a brutal beatdown. Now, where was Fort Teeth? Uh... To... It was in some direction. I totally don't remember what direction it was. Like, I want to say west, maybe? Uh... Hmm, that is what... Wrong button. Dang it. Still getting those mixed up, the menu buttons and the map buttons. I'm doing a little better now, but... Uh, yeah, I think this is the way to Fort Teeth, actually. So I didn't have to go back across that bridge. Oh well. I just fought a single lone Koro Spear in that thing, in that fight. Poor thing didn't stand a chance. The fortress is in sight, but will we get interrupted by another battle? It looks like no. Alright then, so in that case, I'm gonna have, have Mice heal himself here. You know, yeah, I think I remember learning spells at every one of those Sacred Forges, so I think you do just learn a spell automatically when you forge at the Sacred Forge. That's kind of cool. I forgot about that. That being said, um... I'll go ahead and verify that. Try and verify that online and see, mention it in the next video or something, but... That being said, let's go ahead and save for now. We are still on Chapter 4, Find the Sacred Altar Set It Aflame, which I suppose makes sense because we're still trying to find sacred altars. But that's going to do it for this video, so next time we'll go into Fort Teev, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. See you guys then. Take care.